the Energy Bus. 10 Rules to Fuel Your Life, Work, and Team with Positive Energy by John Gordon. Buses are used in all sorts of figures of speech, from looking like you got hit by a bus to getting thrown under the bus. You can miss the bus, meaning miss a great opportunity, and the wheels can come off the bus, meaning an endeavor failed. John Gordon's use of bus imagery is much more refreshing and motivating than these examples. The Energy Bus is an uplifting and encouraging fable in which the bus driver, Joy, teaches a failing character named George life lessons about positive energy and how to bring it into his own relationships and leadership roles. The story opens with George, a character who is struggling in both his home life and his career, being forced to ride the bus because of a flat tire. Joy, the bus driver, assures him that this was meant to be. Author John Gordon uses George's bus rides with Joy as the vehicle to explain the ten important lessons of tapping into positive energy. Number one, you are the driver. As George is faced with what seems to him to be constant bad luck, Joy teaches him the first rule, you are the driver. By this, she means that you can't blame what happens on outside circumstances. Things happen for a reason, and even things that seem bad have a positive side if you're willing to look for it and learn. It is up to you to adjust and use adversity for good. This puts an end to the idea that George can blame others or feel himself the victim. Time to take charge. Number two, desire, vision, and focus move your bus in the right direction. Joy encourages George to mobilize his energy by writing down what he is really after. Where does he want to go? When you articulate your vision clearly, your energy can become focused and directed toward your goal. Number three, fuel your ride with positive energy. George learns that positive and negative energy work against each other. Negativity propels your life toward blame and disappointment, while positive energy propels your life toward joy and success. Consider your attitude as the fuel for your bus. Build faith and purpose to help you overcome obstacles and move forward with enthusiasm. Number four, invite people on your bus and share your vision for the road ahead. Positive energy is both contagious and cumulative. The more people catch your vision, the more positive energy is available to propel you toward your vision. Of course, for people to join you in your vision, they have to know it. To raise a team, you must articulate your vision clearly and extend a purposeful invitation for them to join you. Number five, don't waste your energy on those who don't get on your bus. Unfortunately, the response to George's invitation at work wasn't great. He feels defeated again. John Gordon gives his readers a reality check. Be prepared for rejection. Not everyone will be ready to support your vision, but you can still move forward. It is not worth your time to fret over their responses. In truth, negativity will drain the energy of your vision anyway. Move ahead with whoever is willing to join you. Chances are good that others will eventually see your positive forward progress and want to join you down the road. Number six, post a sign that says, no energy vampires allowed on your bus. George is not to be brought down by negative people. But further, he needs to deal with them firmly. George realizes that much of their negativity is a byproduct of his own. He realizes that if he expects support, he must prove himself to be worth it. Positivity needs to be his new norm. The more positive you are, the more powerful you become. Number seven, enthusiasm attracts more passengers and energizes them during the ride. John Gordon suggests that a CEO should stand for chief energy officer because positive energy is what drives a team to success. And how does your team feel about positive energy? Number eight, love your passengers. The best way to communicate positivity is to truly care about your team. This seems like a tall order that might take the focus off your goal, but the opposite is actually true. No garden grows without cultivation. Gordon suggests five ways to care about your partners and coworkers. To show love to those you work with, you must Make time for them. Listen to them. Recognize them. Serve them. And bring out the best in them. Those you work with have their own personal needs, challenges, and objectives. It is easy to fall into seeing those you work with as only a means to your end. But positive energy is only generated when you see people as people rather than objects. Being willing to see those you work with as individuals strengthens your team and your commitment to one another. Building loyalty depends on actually seeing and knowing those you work with. Number nine, drive with purpose. 
This rule ends up coming to George in an encouraging note from Joy on the day of his big launch. He was extremely nervous about the launch because so much depended on its success, but the idea is to keep your overall purpose in mind. Focusing on the bigger purpose will not only help minimize the stress of high points, but will motivate you through mundane tasks that any vision is likely to require. Number 10. Have fun and enjoy the ride. Gordon ends George's story with an encounter with an elderly gentleman on the bus who encourages George to enjoy the ride. Gordon's point is that it isn't worth it to sacrifice for things you do not desire. Knowing your vision and purpose focuses you on what really gives you joy and fulfillment. Further, don't expect your vision to be just like everyone else's. Pursue your vision without trying to keep up with others or impress them. The author knows whereof he speaks. Gordon's own life was not unlike George's. He was struggling in his family life and even lost a job he thought was ideal for him. But John Gordon turned the bus around, so to speak, finding focus and fulfillment. He wants to be the joy in your life, helping you turn your bus around.